Well, good evening, everyone. This is Chair Moran. Pursuit to House Rule 10.01, I call this remote meeting of the House Ways and Means Committee to order. Ms. Sparkman, please take the roll for attendance. Chair Moran. Present. Moran, present. Vice Chair Olson. Present. Olson, present. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, present. Garofalo, present. Representative Albright, excused. Representative Becker Finn. Becker Finn, present. Becker Finn, present. Representative Bernardi. Bernardi, present. Bernardi, present. Representative Eklund. Present. Eklund, present. Representative Hansen. Present. Hansen, present. Representative Hassan. Hassan, present. Hassan, present. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, present. Hurtas, present. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, present. Hornstein, present. Representative Johnson. Johnson, present. Johnson, present. Representative no, Krisha. Krisha, present. Krisha, present. Representative Liebling. Representative Liebling. Representative Lilly. Lilly present. Lilly present. Representative Mariani. Representative Mariani. Representative Marquart. Marquart present. Marquart present. Representative Miller. Miller present. Miller present. Representative Nash. Nash present. Nash present. Representative Nelson. Nelson present. Nelson present. Representative Noor. Noor present. Noor present. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill present. O'Neill present. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski present. Pulowski present. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg present. Petersburg present. Representative Pinto. Pinto present. Pinto present. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher present. Schumacher present. Representative Schultz. Representative Schultz. Representative Scott. Present. Scott present. Representative Sundin. Sundin present. Sundin present. Representative Liebling. Representative Mariani. Representative Schultz. Present. Schultz present. That concludes the role. There is a quorum present. Great, thank you. A quorum is present. Thank you, Ms. Sparkman. Um, so members, our first agenda item is approval of the minutes from our hearing on Tuesday, June the 22nd. The minutes were included in the hearing documents emailed to you by committee staff. Are there any questions or co corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, uh, Vice Oak, would you like to move the minutes? So move, Madam Chair. So Vice Chair Olson moves approval of the minutes for June the 22nd of 2021. Please unmute briefly for a voice vote. All in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion prevails and the minutes are approved. So members, we're going to hear the budget agreement for the education omnibus first. So the chair will move that house file to be recommended for placement on the general register. And I will also move to adopt the A21-0239, delete all amendment to put the agreed upon language before the committee. Chair Daphne, welcome Hi. back. Please tell us about your budget agreement. Madam Chair, thank you very much. I appreciate your, your moving the bill and the uh, amendment. Madam Chair and members, the principles for the House K-12 Finance Committee uh, really haven't changed from the first day of session. And they're reflected in this, this agreement that I'm pleased to present to you tonight. Those principles included keeping students at the center of our deliberations, recognizing that we need to change the experience of and outcomes for many students, but mostly important, 
Minnesota's BIPOC students. The public funds are for the support and benefit of public school students. That we can make great progress by better supporting children and families in those earliest years. Knowing that schools need stable, sufficient, and predictable funding. And lastly, Madam Chair, that Minnesota school students and school staff are deserving of our best, oldest work. We left the House floor having passed a bill providing $721.7 million in E-12 education funding. The Global Target Agreement of May 16th provided a joint target of $525 million in the first biennium and $675 million in the second. To accommodate the solid investments uh, that you're going to hear briefly and that are reflected in your meeting packet documents, the budget was adjusted to spend $544,204,000 in the first biennium and was reduced to $668,957 million in the second biennium. We came back with a larger number, we came back, excuse me, with a large number of house provisions funded in the bill. And I'd like to walk through those uh, provisions now. We went into the conference committee process with a set of goals. One, stable and secure school funding. Check. This proposal bring, brings schools a 2.45% increase in the general education formula in the first year of the upcoming biennium and a further 2% increase in the second year. That supports districts across the state and stands in sharp contrast to the Senate that passed a K-12 finance bill off of its house floor with a zero and zero increase in the education, uh, general education formula. We return with another house position of over 10 million in special education cross subsidy reduction aid to support schools delivering those key services to students and an $8 million investment over the next four years in English language learner cross subsidy reduction aid. The first investment in those learners in years. We also saw the obligation to improve the educational experiences of students, particularly those students historically underserved in our schools, including Minnesota's BIPOC students. Again, check a number of house provisions that, where we prevailed. Over $19 million in funding for teachers of color and American Indian teacher programs in the first biennium and an additional 16 million in the second. That means more adults at the front of the classroom that look like the students in the classroom. $3 million of that is to the Sane Foundation. $1.5 million to Girls in Action, a million dollars to Math Corps for targeted tutoring, non-exclusionary discipline training for school staff so that more young students can stay in school, all house provisions. We also agreed to $3 million in staff training for the Letters Literacy Program, hoping to move the needle for uh, those students who struggle in early literacy, and a sh shared proposal uh, in both bodies of funding crucial suicide prevention training for school staff. We also recognize that we can have the most impact and the best return for state resources by investing in young learners and their families. Again, check. And again, in sharp contrast with the Senate that had almost no early childhood funding in its bill. With this proposal, we continue 4,000 voluntary pre-kindergarten seats in districts across the state. This is particularly important as the economy comes back and businesses are looking for workers. This program allows parents to re-enter the workforce at a time that they're especially needed. And we expand our investment in Minnesota's Children's Museums, another house position, to ensure access to those wonderful play-based educational institutions for all families. Lastly, Madam Chair, the four state agencies in the bill all received operating adjustments. The Department of Education, 7,242,000,000 in the first biennium, 2,672,000,000 in the second. The Professional Educators Licensing and Standards Board, 193,000 in the first biennium and 240,000 in the second. The Minnesota State Academies in Faribault, $778,000 operating adjustment in the first year and $1,032,000 in the second, excuse me, biennium, not year. And then lastly, the Perpich Center, 
receives a $351,000 operating adjustment for the first biennium and $466,000 in the second biennium. With that, Madam Chair, I stand ready for questions. Nonpartisan staff is also here uh, to bring their expertise. They were, of course, excellent to work with, and I'm grateful uh, for their support throughout the negotiations. Well, thank you, Chair Daphne. So members, we have the A21-0239 amendment before us. Um, I see we have a question, maybe, on um, Chair Pinto. Okay, members, do we yeah, there we go. There, okay, there we there go, we Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm not I'm not sure if this is the right time for this or not. I guess I'll dive in. You can tell me um, it may make sense to do this more after the amendment. I just wanted to highlight for committee members. Um, you may recall that when uh, uh, Chair Davney's bill passed through our committee, it was combined with um, uh, part of a bill from the Early Childhood Committee that I chair. Uh, and I just want to thank uh, Chair Davney for his um, tireless efforts, I know, in the, uh, in the negotiations with the Senate. Um, to secure those uh, pre-K slots that he referenced. Um, it's unfortunate there were some other pieces that we're not able to move through, but I know that it was not through the lack of, uh, uh, not through any lack of trying on the part of Chair Davney. Uh, and just want to um, make sure that folks recognize that a number of the provisions that passed through our committee and the education bill um, did end up uh, getting funded and are moving through, but they will be in the HHS um, uh, report that we will be uh, hearing uh, in the future. Um, so there are a number of early learning provisions that were carried in this bill that are not in it, um, but that, are, that will be in another bill um, as well. And so, uh, but many thanks to, to Chair Dabney. And again, for folks to recognize that, um, that we've made some progress in early learning here and, and are just continuing to, um, uh, to push. Um, so thank you, Madam Chair, for this opportunity. Yeah, and thank you, Chair Pinto, for your leadership um, and advocacy for our youngest learners. Really appreciate it. Representative Kresha. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you to Chair Dabney um, for all your work. Uh, so uh, obviously with what we've seen with other bills, the process has, uh, has been interesting and unique and uh, not a lot of time. I, we received this just today. So I, I haven't had a chance to go through it. I appreciate some of the high level, but um, it would frankly take me some more time. I am curious, I didn't have a lot of interaction um, at all from when we left the House floor and adjourned until the agreement. Uh, what was the process and who was involved uh, to getting here? If you could just, I, I, I didn't know who was all there. And if you could just walk me through that process, that'd be helpful. Chair Dabney. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Kresha, for your question. Uh, we really worked to make sure that there was the, uh, the full spectrum of, of uh, perspectives available to the committee and expertise. So uh, Chair Richardson and Vice Chair uh, Hassan, member of this committee who from the Education Policy Committee were consistently and, and routinely involved and brought their expertise and Representative Pryor, uh, who serves as Vice Chair of the Education, excuse me, of the Early Education Committee uh, was there as well as, as staff. Um, on the Senate side, uh, Chair Chamberlain uh, carried the ball for his team we wanted to make sure that we had uh, the full expertise of members at the table. Uh, Representative Creasy. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Chair Dabney. So I understand that. Uh, how many public meetings were held? I didn't see many notifications. I, I know these things happen uh, in back and forth and offers are traded. Was, what, what was the opportunities for the public to interact? Chair Dabney. Uh, I do not have the count of the public meetings previous to uh, the end of the regular legislative session. After the end of the regular legislative session, unfortunately, uh, the Senate's preference was that we communicate primarily by simply exchanging offers and not, uh, not interacting uh, like this. I would have preferred a much more robust public process. I think you get better legislation that way. I think the public has a better opportunity to understand what's in uh, a piece of legislation and why. If it's there's a more public process, unfortunately, uh, that was not to be to the extent I would have liked. Yeah, Representative Friese. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, and thank you for that. I I had not heard that, so it was uh, it was the clandestine request of the Senate only, and so the the House 
Um, and I'm just, I don't know. I, I've seen, what I've seen is the history from the other bills. Uh, it appears there's a pattern. I, I no fault of probably yours. I think this is probably more leaderships than come from the top. But uh, the reality was there was really no public input or opportunities for folks to engage after the Senate adjourned. Is that what I'm hearing? Or I'm sorry, after the House and Senate adjourned? Yeah, Chair Daphne. You know, we had done a very robust uh, public process previous to that. Um, I would have preferred more, uh, but we returned with uh, the, the majority of items we were able to return with are in very similar uh, state to the way they left the House floor. Uh, Representative Creasy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. It, I'm not going to go much further than this. I, I mean, I, I, Chair Dabney, I hear where you're at. I, I hear the soft cap dances around things. But the reality is, um, from my perspective, the process that we saw in many other bills, in fact, we're following that here, where the bill and documents were posted just today, we're having a ways and means to schedule this to the floor. If, in fact, something were to happen tomorrow, and I know you have an information, that wouldn't even stop the bill from going to the floor because the action today. So uh, I just disagree with the process. Um, I understand how you, you, you got here. Um, I'm just calling out what we see for the public and I'll take some time to read through everything. I'm sure there'll be more discussion, but uh, um, I, I guess if people look at this process and applaud it, um, I, I think that's a long, long bad road to follow no matter who's in charge because what we do, what we do for our students and what we do for our constituents is way, way too important to agree to go behind closed doors. And um, I think we're, we're seeing that path. I, I don't think we can reverse it, um, which saddens me, but I think there's too many people on both sides of the aisle that could do things better, but we are, are running into mechanisms that are preventing that. And, and that's too bad. And um, it's sad to see it happen this way because I think there's some good things to talk about. I think there's some good work that'll come out and that will shroud uh, the effectiveness of hearts and minds of what people have done. So that's unfortunate. And I'll, I'll save my other comments for the house floor. Okay, are there any other questions for the author? Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Dabney. As always, thanks for your work as a committee chair. It's a, a big job to do and uh, thanks for serving the state of Minnesota and the House of Representatives. I just wanna ask you, uh, my back of the envelope math here, when I'm looking at the federal money as well as the um, the increases in forecast, the increases in base, are that uh, K through 12 schools are gonna get about two and a half billion dollars more than the previous biennium. Is that a is that an accurate number? Chair sure, Daphne. Um, Madam Chair, Representative Garofalo, I don't have the same envelope. Uh, unfortunately, that you do. So I'm, I don't have that total. I would remind you that for the federal money, uh, schools have up to four years to spend that. And I would certainly hope that they would do it uh, making invest strategic investments that can change the outcomes for Minnesota students. But I don't have a, a total. Representative Garofalo. Um, so Representative Dabney, the, in terms of the two and a half billion number, I just want to make sure like the federal number right now, it's about about 1.4 billion. Is that how much new money is coming from the federal government? Is that about right? Sure, Daphne. Uh, Madam Chair, Representative Garofalo, I, be I believe that is, yes. Okay. And then Madam Chair, Representative mm -hmm. Dabney, um, in terms of the increase above base, can you just remind us again what the number was for, for K-12? Sure, Daphne. Uh, so... In this agreement for the next biennium, it's an increase of 554,204,000. And in the tails, it's an increase of 668,957,000. Representative Garofalo. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. It's a lot of money there. I'll be voting no, but I understand there'll be a diversity of opinion. But again, Representative Dabney, thanks for your work. Okay. If there's no further discussion, the chair renews our motion to adopt the A21-0239 <clears throat> author's amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. No. The, the motion no. fails and the amendment is adopted. 
Now, is there any further discussion to the bill? Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, uh, Chair I, I just... <laughs> I just want to correct you. I, I think I heard you say the motion fails and the amendment was adopted. You may want to just restate that for the record. Okay. I hope I didn't say that, but for uh, for the record, um, the motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Thank you, Representative Cresha. We wouldn't want that to happen, would we? Um, so if there's no further discussion, uh, the chair has renewed her motion that House File 2, as amended, be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Bartman, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Uh, aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. No. Garofalo, no. Representative Albright, excused. Representative Becker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eklund. Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hurtos. Hurtos, no. Hurtos, no. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson. Johnson, no. Johnson, no. Representative Kresha. Kresha, no. Kresha, no. Representative Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Mariani. Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. <clears throat> Representative Marquart. Marquart, aye. Marquart, aye. Representative Miller? Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash? Nash, no. Nash, no. Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Representative Pinto. Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott. No. Scott, no. Oh. Representative Sundin. Aye. Sundin, aye. There are 18 ayes and 10 nays. All right, so there have been 18 ayes and 10 nays. The motion prevails. House file two as amended is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you, Chair Daphne. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members. So the next bill on the agenda is the bonding correction bill, which is House file 52. The chair will move that House File 52 be recommended for placement on the general register. Chair Lee, welcome back to the committee. So please tell us about your bill. And then I believe you will have an author's amendment that you would also like us to adopt along with the technical amendments. Thank you, Madam Chair and members for the opportunity to present House File 52, which is the bonding modification bill. Uh, during the regular session, the House Capital Investment Committee held two hearings on the modifications pertaining to uh, the 2020 bonding bill and previous bonding bill authorizations. Uh, included in the bill are 45 modifications that has been vetted by uh, MMB to ensure that the projects were described accurately so a grant uh, agreement could be executed. All right, so thank you, Chair Lee. So the chair will move the A1 amendment on behalf of the author. Shirley, please uh, describe the amendment before we go to the A2 amendment. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Chair. The author's amendment uh, amends the uh, Norway House modification that's included in the uh, House File 52 and also include conveyance of state land to Asante County to be used uh, by them for community-based services. This was adopted in the Senate. And then uh, the majority of the uh, amendment also established the uh, target, targeted community capital project grants program. 
Uh, this competitive grant program continues the work that was started in the 2020 bonding bill by the legislature in funding and supporting organizations that are run by and serve uh, communities that have historically not received significant uh, capital investment from the state. And this was an important step in continuing our work to address uh, some of the disparities that we see in several areas. And so uh, going on uh, further down the amendment, the program uh, is available statewide for organizations to apply for critical support for the capital projects need. And uh, they will receive help as needed to navigate the process through deed. Uh, political subdivisions, tribal governments, uh, tribal nonprofits, nonprofits, and certain small businesses are eligible to apply for the funds. Uh, the program prioritizes small or organizations who have historically not received uh, capital grants from the state, as well as those that serve immigrants, uh, young people from families that have experienced uh, inter intergenerational poverty, low income areas, or uh, individuals who are unemployed or underemployed, as well as nonprofits who are majority operated or governed by persons who are women, uh, BIPOC, or a person with substantial physical disability. Uh, we wanted to focus on smaller community-based organizations, so hospitals, uh, private schools, credit unions, or higher education institutions are ineligible to apply. Uh, the program uh, is you know, a little bit stricter for uh, qualifying small businesses. Uh, they cannot have more than the equivalent of 50 full-time employees in Minnesota, uh, must have a history of providing benefits to and developing long-standing connections to the surrounding community, and must meet the requirements under Minnesota rules for the socially and economically uh, disadvantaged uh, economically disadvantaged area or veteran owned small business program, although they do not need to be certified by the uh, department administration under those rules. Uh, the program that we established uh, allows for applicants that you know have provided services or want to provide services to their community around economic development, education, addressing food insecurity, uh, performing in visual arts, veteran services, housing, including shelters, healthcare, uh, workforce development, or legal services uh, services to marginalized communities. However, these services and the project must provide a clear public purpose that is included in their application to deed. Uh, grants could be for project phases and deed must provide education and support to applicants as needed. Uh, this is critical since the program prioritized those who haven't received these types of capital grants from the state of Minnesota. And uh, we also required uh, D to provide an annual report to the legislature about the grants award, the recipients, and the services provided by these projects. And then in section two of the amendment, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we recognize that some of the projects that was funded in the 2020 bill only receive a phase of their project. And so the bill also provides a one-time allowance in, 20, in year 2022 for any organizations included in uh, Article 3 of the 2020 bonding bill to apply for a grant under this program, even if they don't meet the uh, eligibility uh, criteria in this bill or this uh, amendment. And that's the A1 amendment, Madam uh, Chair. Thank you, Chair Lee. Uh, so I would now move on to the A2 amendment to the A1 amendment. So Chair Lee, could you please briefly explain the A2? So the A2, uh, just uh, correct one of the, of the ambiguity, uh, ambiguity. So on page four, line 28, uh, we delete and and insert or. And then on page uh, six, line 14, after the period, we inserted the appropriation is available until June 30, uh, 2023, just to ensure that the uh, deed have the time to allow for projects to uh, apply for the competitive grant program and for them to disperse of the money. All right, thank you, Chair Lee. So members, are there any questions on the amendment to the amendment? If there's no further discussion, the chair renews her motion to adopt the A2 amendment to the A1 amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. The motion prevails and the amendment to the amendment is adopted. So we are back on the A1 amendment as amendments. Are there, as amended. Are there any questions for Chair Lee on the A1? Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Before we adopt the amendment, um, Representative Lee, so do you have um, consensus or agreement on this amendment and this overall bill? Chair Lee. Uh, thank you. Uh... 
Madam Chair, so we have not have any uh, discussion with uh, any of the other uh, caucuses on this uh, amendment, and so we wanted to you know, provide this right now for for us to have this dis discussion. Representative Garofalo. All right. Well, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we're running out of time, and there's no agreement on this language, and uh, certainly my friend Chair Lee can choose to waste the committee's time with this language, but. Uh, our side of the aisle is not going to waste anyone's time, so I just encourage people to vote no, and let's get on to getting our work done. Okay. Are there any other further discussion? So, there being no further discussion, uh, the chair renews her motion to adopt the A1 office amendment as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. no. The motion prevails and the amendment as amended is adopted. Okay, I'm going to open it up one more time for any further discussion to the bill. Okay, if there is, since there's no further discussion, the chair renews our motion that House File 52 as amended be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Sparkman, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson? Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo? No. Garofalo, no. Representative Albright, excused. Representative Becker Finn? Becker Finn, aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi? Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eklund? Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen? Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan? Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hertoss? Representative Hertoss? Hertoss, no. Hertoss, no. Representative Hornstein? Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson? Johnson, no. Johnson, no. Representative Cresha? No. Prisha, no. Representative Liebling? Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly? Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Mariani? Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquardt? Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Representative Miller? Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash? Nash, no. Nash, no. Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Representative Pinto? Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher? Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Representative Schultz? Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott? Scott, no. Scott, no. Representative Sundin? <laughs> Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. There are 18 ayes and 10 nays. Chair Moran, you're muted at the moment. Thank you, Vice Chair Olson. So there have been 13 ayes and 10 nays. The motion prevails. House file 52 as amended is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you, Chair Lee. So members, we're going to move two vehicle bills out to the floor tonight before we adjourn. We will start with House file 54. Chair Nelson, would you like to move your bill and give us a brief explanation of, before we vote? Thank you, Chair Moran. Um, members, House File 54 is a bill that, as was stated, was going to be used as a vehicle bill if needed. Um, but what it does is it just, if there's money at the end of the budget cycle, it raises the amount that we're going to have in the budget reserve account from 1.6 million, rounded to 1.6 million to 2.4 million. Actually, it's 2.377. 399 uh, million million dollars anyway million dollars so that's what the bill does and but as as the chair 
Moran said, this is a vehicle bill for in case of emergency or in case something needs to be um, acted on quickly on the floor. Thank you, Chair Nelson. I see we have a question, Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So Representative Nelson, this bill costs nothing, does nothing, and is opposed by absolutely no one. Is that correct? Uh, Chair Nelson. Um, Madam Chair and Representative Garofalo, yes. That's, that's accurate. <laughs> well, Madam Chair, I am proud to us. Uh, so I, I ran on this bill. This is why <laughs> I ran for election is, you know, so uh, I'm happy to support Representative Nelson's bill today. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions? If there's no further discussion, Chair Nelson renews his motion that House File 54 be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Sparkman, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. Aye. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright, excused. Representative Becker Finn. Becker Finn, aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eklund. Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hertoss. Aye. Hertoss, aye. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson. Johnson, aye. Johnson, aye. Representative Cresha. Cresha, no. Cresha, no. Representative Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Lily, aye. Lily, aye. Representative Mariani. Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash. Nash, no. Nash, no. Representative Nelson. Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor. Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Pinto. Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, aye. Schumacher, aye. Representative Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott. Scott, no. Scott, no. Representative Sundin. Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. There are 23 ayes and five nays. Okay, so there have been 23 ayes and five nays. The motion prevails. House file 54 is recommended for placement on the general register. So thank you, Chair Nelson. So the last bill on the agenda is House file 33. Chair Liebling, you do have an author's amendment. So would you like to move your bill and then the A1 amendment? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I would, thank you. I'd like to move House file 33 to be recommended to be placed on the general register. And then I understand there is an author's amendment. Yes, ma'am, that's the A1. That is my understanding, yes. Okay. Would you like to move the A1 amendment? And then yes. Explain it? Well, Madam Chair, I can't really explain it because okay. I don't have a copy of it actually. Okay. And I'm just looking for that, so. Ma Madam Chair, I can explain the amendment. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's wait and see, can uh, Chair Liebling find the... Well, it's really simple though, Madam Chair. She just okay. deletes sections two and three of the underlying bill. Uh, it deletes seven okay. and a half million dollars in spending from the bill. Well, well thank you. See. Oh, I think okay. he's going to leave section two and three. I mean, would you think I was lying, Madam Chair? Come on. I don't know. <laughs> well, I appreciate you. Uh, hey, I'm um, always helpful. Always helpful. <laughs> all right. I have that now, Madam Chair. Um, yes. Right. So, yes, it's just deleting sections two and three from the underlying bill. That is what it is doing. So, um, 
So I would move the A1. All right. Um, so, well, thank you, Chair uh, Lee Lee. So members, are there any questions before we adopt the amendment? So if there's no further discussion, Chair Lee Lee renews a motion to adopt the A1. Oh, I do see Representative Nash's hand. I'm sorry, Representative Nash. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And to uh, the author of the amendment, was this an amendment that is also um, supported by the Senate? Was this done with your counterpart over there or is this on your own? Chair Lee Lee. All right, so Madam Chair, I thank you. Thank you for the question, Representative Nash. So as with the previous bill, this is a vehicle bill. So the, the language before you in the in House File 33 is really, actually it is agreed upon language, but it's just a tiny, tiny piece of language that is in the Health and Human Services agreed upon bill. And so um, the amendment is just making it a smaller piece of that language, but it's just intended to be a vehicle. So uh, that sorry to not get you that explanation in the beginning so this is this is decidedly not about the substance of the bill but yes there the language that is here is agreed upon language yeah this is the second vehicle bill that i talked about earlier the two that we were moving uh, thank, thank you madam chair i just always yeah, appreciate the specificity that we can gain here in the committee yeah do you have any further questions um representative nash none for me okay so there being no other, no further discussion, Chair Liebling renew her motion to adopt the A1 Office Amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Um, I see no other questions or further discussion on this, Chair Liebling. So uh, Chair Liebling renews her motion that House File 33 as amended be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Sparkman, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo votes aye. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright, excused. Representative Beckerfin. Beckerfin, aye. Beckerfin, aye. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eklund. Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hertoss. Aye, aye. Hertoss, aye. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson. Johnson, aye. Johnson, aye. Representative Kresha. No. Kresha, no. Representative Liebling. Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Mariani. Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquart. Marquart, aye. Marquart, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Miller, aye. Representative Nash. Nash, aye. Nash, aye. Representative Nelson. Nelson votes aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor. Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill. No. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Pinto. Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, aye. Schumacher, aye. Representative Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott. Scott, no. Scott, no. Representative Sundin. Representative Sundin. There are 24 Sundin, ayes. Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. There are 25 ayes and three nays. Okay, so there have been 25 ayes and three nays. The motion prevails. House file 33, as amended, is recommended for placement on the general register. So thank you, Chair Liebling. 
So members, that concludes our agenda for the night. We have just a few bills left to pass out of this committee. You know, it's going to be very fluent. So please continue to watch your emails for notices on future hearings. Okay, um, I'm not too sure who that was or what you said. Okay, so please keep your eyes uh, on your emails for notices for, on future hearings. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>